All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be an unboxing of this knife. And as you can see from my um, attempt at a drawing of a bowl, I guess I should have put a ring on its nose. This is the Great Eastern Cutlery Farm and Field number 71 bull nose. Now, this is a knife that they do frequently. I'll be opening it here with my trusty user bull nose. This is from a previous run, I believe 2018. That would make sense. Yeah, 2018. Uh, this one was actually a gift from uh, Ken Mundank of Blue Creek Cutlery. Um, I was getting married and he sent this along. So really appreciate that. But as you can see, this one from this run here in 2021 is from Knife Ship Free, also known as Bone Distributing. And um, <clears throat> one thing here I'll talk about while I open this is that you know, I, I got this one that I have here and I'm opening it for free, uh, but I've had several other bull noses. And um, this from Knife Ship Free was $62. I think it was like $61.50 something, I think. Uh, and that is actually less than what these were from most dealers in 2018 when they were run. I think they were around 65 most places then. So really kind of an amazing price. I mean, in that time, in those two years, three years, definitely, certainly you would think costs have gone up even, you know, outside of just inflation. Um, so really great price. And uh, also I was interested in getting one of these because I've seen a lot of discussion, particularly on the Great Eastern Cutlery Club Facebook page or group, I guess, uh, about this knife and actually pre the previous run of knives that Greatest Cutlery did, the number 89, uh, and surrounding blade wrap. So as you can see, this one is in red linen micarta. It looks like this red linen has gotten lighter through the years as they've used it. Uh, so that's kind of cool. But it's pattern number 71. It has a drop point blade, which is the five. It's a single blade and it was made in 2021. So uh, I've seen several people report blade wrap on these. And in fact, it, it's, it's not a surprise to hear that. Um, previous runs have had blade wrap, you know, relatively prevalent also. In fact, I think this one had some blade wrap and uh, through, through sharpening, I mean, this has been used pretty well. Lots of flitzing um, once it gets heavily patinaed and stuff, but it doesn't have blade wrap anymore, but I do think it did at one point. Um, and so I was interested in that. And here it is. So a really pretty vibrant red. That's the first thing I noticed. Very clearly a fine kind of linen micarta. Another thing I'm noticing right away here is that this is sitting pretty low in the handle, which, you know, if you watch my channel, you know, I, I hate proud tips. Uh, so it definitely doesn't have a proud tip and I do appreciate that. Really nice here on the back spring, no gaps at all. Very smooth, nicely put together. Um, and that's kind of what distinguishes these from something like a Case Sodbuster Jr. The Case is just not gonna be put together as well. Uh, not as finely fit uh, and really not as nice a finish either, even though this is Great Eastern Cutlery's working um, brand or uh, budget brand, I guess you might say. But it does sit low on the handle. And another thing you'll notice here um, like I said, mine has been used and sharpened quite a bit, and it looks like I have sharpened a relatively good amount of blade length out of that. So that's just how it goes. Um, I am interested to see if this has blade wrap, but let's, let's open it up. I would say the pull is pretty similar to my 2008 or 18. Yeah, pretty similar, uh, which I'd say is about a six, maybe a seven. I think that this will get a little smoother too once I put some mineral oil in it. But actually, let's take a look at the difference in the blades. So yeah, I mean, you can see the difference there. Mine has definitely been sharpened down some and a little bit different shape, uh, less pointy, but that's just what happens in use. So uh, kind of moment of truth here, I don't see any right off the bat, like reflecting. I don't feel any. Oh, that, that would be really cool. I would be happy with that. I don't think mine has any. I really don't. 
Wow, I'm surprised. I'm honestly kind of surprised by that because, you know, uh, the blade is very full. It's it's taller than, than my used blade is. It has a strong pull at a six or seven. Um, nice snap. And it sits, again, low in the handle. It doesn't sound to me like it has blade wrap either, uh, which when you've heard as many knives as I have have blade wrap, it's relatively... Um, recognizable sound uh and i really i don't think this one does which i'm surprised with how deep that that sits in the handle there really nice uh pull in my opinion too it's kind of like where i like uh the bull nose to be i don't feel any blade wrap at all i mean you can hear it's not catching uh boy i'm surprised and happy with that and that's one thing here um, you know, I've talked about blade wrap on GEC knives relatively a good bit because I have had it a lot, but that's in part also because I really don't like a knife to have a proud tip or even really close to a proud tip. Um, I have talked about blade wrap a lot and I dislike it. Um, so a little bit of a discussion, uh, one of the reasons I want to do this video, even though I've had, I have several other videos on the bull nose and the 21 bull buster. Um, one of the reasons I want to do this video is because there has been that discussion recently, uh, about blade wrap. Um, so some people say that blade wrap isn't an issue. They almost argue in favor of it. And the, uh, main arguments that I see from that kind of camp are that, Blade wrap, first of all, is the user's fault. So people say that you should not close a knife as I've been closing this knife, and really as I close all of the knives that I have, um, except maybe a, a, you know, a really collector piece, um, but certainly any user. So they say that you should close it with control, so basically two-handed every time like that, and honestly, I think some people even would say that that was too much. So they would want you to like hold on to the blade pretty much the whole way closed. And I am just 100% out on that. Um, I, I've thought about it a lot. I've tried to be like, you know, see the other side and stuff. And I am just completely out on it. If you are going to use a knife, which these GEC knives, I've talked to Bill Howard about it. Uh, and he says that these knives are made to use. And there's really no question that this knife, the farm and field knives, are made to use. If you use a knife, I just can't understand how you could use a knife, legitimately use it, not just use it, you know, to to open and close, which there's nothing wrong with an en enjoying a knife just because it's cool. There's nothing wrong with not using a knife. But if you do use a knife, I don't see how you can possibly use it, legitimately use it, and never allow it to close uh, of its own spring strength to, to always close it with two hands. It just seems not only impractical, but improbable uh, to the, that someone would be able to never allow that to happen. So I just can't get behind that argument. Um, a lot of times it also has a little bit of a flavor of like young people not doing things right. Um, you know, a lot of times people say, you know, my grandpa taught me to, to close it this way. And, and that's cool. You know, nothing wrong with how your grandpa taught you to close it. My grandpa carries a, a slip joint knife every day and he closes it by, you know, pushing it against his pants pocket because he, he uses it. And um, I, I really think that a knife should be able to be closed that way without doing damage to the, the actual, you know, practical part of the knife, the edge, the cutting edge, uh, without doing damage to that. It should be able to, to be closed in that way. So I, I just can't get behind that first argument. The second argument that I often see is that um, it the reason that blade wrap happens on GEC knives is because they, they make the blades as tall as they can so that you get as much blade as possible so that the, the knife has as much life as possible. So you can sharpen it as many times uh, as they can possibly fit into the handle frame. First of all, while that I think is true, I do think that Grayish Cutlery does try to make their blades as tall as possible so that you can use them as long as possible, which as you can see, certainly I am in favor of. Um, you know, I have several GEC knives that I have used, carried, sharpened enough that, you know, I've had to lower the kick and that, you know, they have changed blade shape because I have carried and used and sharpened them so much. So I'm certainly, you know, in favor of that. But that doesn't mean that we should be okay with blade wrap. 
Um, so again, blade wrap is when the edge hits the back spring because of over travel, because of the momentum created by the spring pressure, and it swings past where it should and the edge hits the back spring. And it does damage to the edge, so it either rolls or dents the edge in a way that definitely affects cutting. Um, it certainly makes the cut the cutting, you know, practical aspect of the knife less effective. Um, and I really just don't think that that is a trade-off that, that I like. Um, I, I would much prefer to get a knife with a little bit less edge, with a little bit less, you know, tallness to, to the blade that I won't have to, you know, as the first time I let it close of its own spring pressure, I won't have to take however long. I mean, sometimes it takes a long time to sharpen out the blade wrap because you're removing material enough that it doesn't hit the edge. I just don't like that trade-off. I, I would rather it come where I know that it's not going to do damage to the practical part of the knife uh, so that I don't have to take my time to to sharpen it out. That said, I have kept lots of GEC knives that had, you know, several GEC knives that had blade wrap and sharpened them out, certainly. Like I said, the, the, you know, this one, which is absolutely one of my favorites, uh, had, I believe had blade wrap when I first got it, if I recall correctly. But others have also. Um, it's just not a trade trade off that I'm comfortable with. I would rather get the knife with a smaller blade. Um, and oftentimes people make the comparison to case knives, that case knives, one of the reasons people don't like case knives is that they have these smaller blades to, you know, ensure that there isn't blade wrap. Now, I agree that cases blades are kind of weird looking often. A lot of their patterns have blades that look like they are smaller than they should be. Certainly, I, I don't disagree with that. But at the same time, uh, I have had as much or more percentage-wise blade wrap on case knives as on GEC knives. Now, of course, I have a much, much bigger uh, pull, you know, to compare of GEC knives. I've purchased many, many more GEC knives than case knives. But of the relatively few case knives that I've purchased, um, more, a higher percentage have had blade wrap. Uh, most of them have had blade wrap. So uh, I don't, while I agree with the argument that Case's blades look kind of weird sometimes, I don't agree that, that it stops them from having blade wrap. They also do have blade wrap. Um, and aside from all of that, so, you know, my point is that I don't agree with either of those points. I don't think blade wrap is something that a knife should come with. And I, I'm not happy about it when I get a knife, even if I do sometimes keep knives that come with blade wrap. That said, it isn't really that prevalent. Um, I mean, certainly you get more GEC knives that don't have blade wrap than do. That said, I do think it's more prevalent than it should be. Um, another that said <laughs> is that GEC, and this is kind of one point that I really wanted to make sure that I made, uh, GEC, or at least its representatives, seem to agree that blade wrap is a defect. And there's a specific reason why I say that. Uh, two, actually. The first is that Joan May Howard, who is the sales manager for Gradation Cutlery, um, actually, in response to a post that had 90-some comments about blade wrap on this pattern of knives, posted, if you get a knife with blade wrap from the factory, you can send it in for warranty to, you know, repair it and take the blade wrap out. So that indicates to me that they do consider it to be a defect. Um, now, when they repair it, at least from my previous experience, which takes me to, to my second reason for saying that they considered it to be a defect, is that um, I've had knives that I took to the factory and said, hey, this has blade wrap, that they have been happy to repair for me, happy to, to get rid of the blade wrap. And all that they really do, at least in the cases that I have been there and seen them doing it, is sharpen it out. So that's all they really would need to do is sharpen a little bit uh, more out. One more of that said, uh, another um, employee of Gradation Cutlery, uh, Randy Bell, who is the engineer there, said that they do uh, a check for blade wrap where they, they do, you know, close it pretty much as I am, allowing it to close of its own spring pressure. Now, he said they don't whack it closed, but, you know, they do allow it to close of its own spring pressure. And so they do check for that before it goes out. 
So all of that leads me to believe that um, even though it's not super, super prevalent, blade wrap is more prevalent than it should be on GEC knives. Uh, I consider it to be a defect, and I believe GEC considers it to be a defect, um, and they will fix it. So if you do get a knife with blade wrap and you would rather have them fix it from the factory, uh, then you can email them and or call them and they will fix it. Um, so I just wanted to have a discussion. It wasn't, I guess, that quick. I intended it to be a little bit shorter on blade wrap because of so much discussion about blade wrap on this run of knives online. But again, one more time, let's test it out here. It's getting smoother, a little bit less rough already. Definitely nice action. Definitely doesn't sound to me like it has blade wrap. Um, doesn't look like it has blade wrap. Doesn't feel like it has blade wrap. So I think I got a good one here and um, I am happy with this, especially at that price of $62. I don't think that there is a better deal on a traditional slip joint knife on the market anywhere. Um, I think this is the best deal that you can get at that price, but other dealers aside from Knife Ship Free and Collector Knives, uh, that those are the only ones I know of, there could be others, but uh, other than those, um, some dealers have charged significantly, significantly more than that price. So if you can get it for, you know, a reasonable price, which I think that's more than reasonable, uh, this is could be a really nice knife, but who knows if you'll get blade wrap. So this is just uh, an unboxing and then I guess also a discussion on blade wrap uh, on this knife, the Gradation Cutlery Farm and Field Tool number 71 bull nose in red linen micarta and if you've enjoyed this video uh, go ahead and like it you can also subscribe to my channel and click the bell so you know when i post new videos also check out my social media i'm on instagram and facebook mostly at knife thoughts and my website knife thoughts.com where i post articles on knives like this and knife related topics and i do have an article on the bull nose and bull buster so you can check that out i'll put the link in the description and last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.